Welcome once again to another Chef Knives to Go Quick Look product review. I'm Steve Gamash, and what we're looking at this time is the Takeda Classic Vunca 170 millimeter knife. Um, so Takeda is a absolute master of algami or blue paper super reactive high carbon steel from Hitachi, and the heat treat that they take it to is about 62 Rockwell, so kind of middle of the road. A um, little bit forgiveness, but still keeps some of that famous um, edge retention that uh, AS is known for. This is their classic series, so the construction is a reactive iron, soft iron cladding on either side of that core steel for a three-layer sandwich. And uh, Takeda puts the Kuda Uchi or blacksmith finish on top of that. We'll get a close-up look at it, but it's got kind of a crinkle effect, a little more textured. The stainless is very similar knife, but um, it's got a smoother finish on it. So the... Um, Weight is 118 grams or 4.2 ounces. And look at the size of that blade and look at that weight. So these are light, light blades and very thin. The edge length is 177 millimeters or about 7 inches. And Takeda's can vary more than most knives because they don't really use a pattern when they hammer them out. So that's what this one is. But you can see quite a bit of variance on the edge lengths, the heights, and stuff like that. So if you have particular preferences, you can always inquire to Chef Knives to go say, hey, do you have a shorter one? Do you have a longer one? And they can see what they've got available. So again, there's a fair amount of variance here. This is this particular one. Uh, the overall length is about 12.3 inches on the knife. Uh, the spine thickness is two point, a little over two millimeters coming out of the handle above the back of the blade. But um, it's hard to describe how thin this thing is. And you can see that gets real skinny off of that really fast so it's one something up here where the turn happens in the reverse sword tip and then it's just skinny 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 until you hit the the grind which they've got a pretty small primary bevel on these and it just thins out really skinny right at the very very tip so this overall knife is really thin and the the stainless is even thinner it's hard to believe they can hammer these out but so you're going to get a little bit of flex on these that's just the nature of the knife that's his style um, you can also see it's a fairly tall blade. This one's about 55.4 millimeters at the heel, and I measured it at the middle. It's about 56.7, so a little taller in the middle. And then I think a tip, it kind of th goes back down a little bit. The, um, let's see what else. Uh, the handle is just a nicely done octagonal rosewood handle with an ebony ferrule. Although, looking at this, I'm going to ask Mark about this. This looks a little bit more like black packer wood than ebony, but we'll check on that. Um, Real nice fit and finish on that. They seal up the tang really well with some kind of uh, clear epoxy or some kind of sealant. So these are tools, guys, and they make them to work hard. So they seal that up um, to keep moisture out of there, and that's what they do. So uh, handle circumference is about 73 millimeters to 2.9 inches where the ferrule and the main handle would meet. You can see it's plenty tall, loads of board clearance, and it's almost like a... Nikiti with the tip on it, really, in terms of the sh general shape. So here is the balance point on this, which is pretty close to a pinch grip. Really nimble, really light. You can see some of that texture. Let's take a close-up look at it. So the Classic Series has a cool texture to it. Uh, pretty durable Kuda Uchi finish, despite what it might look like, not being super consistent. But they've got a pretty durable finish on them. Here's your uh, standard embossed kanji heart symbol as for algami super and you can see the blade road um, they do a one primary bevel and it goes all the way to the edge so this is what they call zero grind so on either side we start there and we take it right down to the edge so that you don't see any kind of secondary bevel on these and they've also even despite how thin these are they still have a little bit of a concave kind of facet to them from the spine and then it thickens back up right before you hit the grind and so the food release on these is absolutely excellent. They're kind of unique knives and nobody else does quite like the things that uh, Takeda-san does and they get you know it's just ridiculous how thin this thing is and of course it's thin at the edge. We'll take a look at uh, the, you know the fit and finish is nice smooth spine, smooth choil, Here's a close-up of the gluing on the joint, so really sealed up well. Let's take a look at it on the cutting board. So this thing may look a little bit big, but it is so light, you just wouldn't believe it holding it. 
Here's our profile, and you can see just kind of a gentle curve. Um, should work for a variety of techniques, not, not super flat. A little bit of back belly towards the heel. You can't lift it too high. The tip you can see is pretty low, not a lot of belly, so I'm not going to get too high. This is not a rocker. Again, not a lot of belly towards the tip, so you know I'm digging in right there. So this is really not a rocking knife. It's a good chopper, push-pull, cuts. It's actually sticking in this board, it's so sharp. <laughs> Speaking of which, the out of box edge is really nice on this. I'd say about a seven or eight, just because they do such a nice job with that primary bevel. So there you have a classic, no pun, or I guess pun intended, haha. <laughs> the Takeda Classic Vunka 170 millimeter knife.